Hi folks, welcome to my Bit Retro Journal. Um, so a friend of the channel, is Dr. Dave, uh, Dave from Dr. Dave's Diversion, um, saw my uh, April 23rd video on getting my uh, spectrum to work and uh, that I discovered that, because there was a new spectrum that I got in, that my old spectrum had a bad uh, ULA and so he donated um, this to the channel. And so um, this is a, uh, an FPGA uh, chip that uh, replicates that ULA, the Ferranti ULA, which are really hard to find. And so um, I was going to check it out today and try it on uh, um, my, uh, so this is the board, this is the power supply. This is the board uh, of the bad, um, so this is a 16K uh, Spectrum that I did a lot of work on. Uh, trying to figure it out. I, I literally replaced every, um, uh, oh, that, that, that came off of the, uh, that was on the, uh, chip. Uh, I'm not even going to put this back on today, uh, because this is a bad chip and, um, yeah, I'm just going to see if I can put, uh, another Z80 chip in here from here. And then replace that. So I don't know what this is supposed to do, but uh, my other um, spectrum doesn't have it. So hopefully it's not necessary. Just maybe does some interference work. Um, all right. In any case, uh, I will um, uh, maybe, maybe I'll figure out where it should go and put it back. Uh, but so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this. And again, this is actually a bad processor. So uh, I need to put the other processor on, which is actually from here. But let's see first what I got. Uh, um, I mean, this is from uh, Charlie Engel from New uh, Zealand, who also is the maker of the uh, V drive, which I love on my QL. So, um, Here we go. Yeah, that's a V Retro. That's who he is. Uh, I need to open that up. And let's see what we got here. Oh, we got some shreds. There you go. Let's try to keep it clean. And in here, We have, yeah, uh, the, the replacement ULA. So, uh, here it is. Look at that. Um, let me zoom in on it. So it's running a Xilinx uh, processor. And so this is, uh, yeah, you can see here, it's uh, designed by Charlie uh, Ingley. And uh, this replaces the Ferranti ULA. So nice design, same size as the original chip. And you know, I really hope that um, uh, somebody designs uh, the, the two ULAs that are in the QL because uh, those are becoming hard to find. Uh, but uh, it's nice that someone has designed it for the Spectrum. All right, getting back to where we were. All right, so uh, the first thing is to have to uh, remove this chip and put this one in here and uh, the notch is off. So let me do that. I don't have a chip over, so I got to be very careful because uh, you don't want to damage the motherboard while you're getting these out. So I try to do it very uh, small amounts. And not uh, uh, I guess it can't fit in here, so it's got to be done through here. So um, if you stay close to the legs, then you're not going to uh, hit the motherboard, which is you don't want to hit the circuit board, basically. All right, and once you have it, you kind of want to pivot it or. Yeah, so this is the bad chip. The legs aren't bent, so that's good. And it uh, does go in uh, 
the notch is right here. And that's how it was pulled. So it goes in this direction. All right, so let's put this chip on here and uh, for this replacement FPGA. It has a, uh, uh, let me go off camera really quick. Yeah, unfortunately this has the bad sockets that sometimes don't do so well with these kind of uh, round pins. So we will see um, how this does, but uh, let's put it in here. Here we go. And then just, uh, hate to always press it until I'm sure that the pins are not, yep, so the pins are good. So we're gonna press it in. There we go. That's it. So the other thing I need to replace is this is a bad CPU. I did test it and uh, it doesn't work in my uh, it's a Z80. And it doesn't work in my uh, ZX81 Timex Entry 1000. So this has to get pulled too. And this one's going to be a little easier to pull because I can pull it from both sides. Again, if you stay on the plastic part of the, on, on, on this part of the uh, then you're guaranteed not to uh, damage the motherboard. And so what I'm doing as I'm putting my screwdriver in there is I'm keeping it on on these. I, I don't know where this is, so I'm not so I'm not doing this. I'm doing this so that the, it doesn't damage the motherboard. All right, what I need to do next uh, is uh, take the z80 out of this so, so let me do that really quickly uh what i'll do maybe is i will um fast forward through that all right okay so um unfortunately uh I glued these on, so I'm going to have to glue them back on again. And the glue that I use works really well. So this should come off. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's on. Yeah. And these are the... Uh... Last time I made the mistake of putting the longer screws in the back. Uh, so hopefully I, I will remember this time how to do it properly. This was the uh, uh, machine that I actually uh, fixed the... Um, the keyboard on it uh, yeah so um, you can see right here that uh, uh, this has a cable and so basically the ribbon is only this short here and so uh, I need to remove these two screws and then I can fold the keyboard back towards me so let's do that And you can see that uh, now as I'm gonna open this up, this bends down and this is taped down here so it doesn't bother. So this was a nice uh, hack to get my other Time Extinction 1000 back uh, up and running. So my, um, I believe this is the Z80 that I need to take out. So I'm gonna be very cautious on here. That's the Ferrante chip. And again, using the same technique I'm gonna stay there we go. There we go. Okay, extracted. I'm gonna put this to to the side now. Um, and I can go. I don't want to damage this. So let me put this here and uh see the not to confuse the circuit board screws put this over here 
These are the feet. Okay, it's getting a little messy here, but that's all right. So now, um, again, all we want to do is, so again, the chip goes in this direction. And just want to make sure that the legs line up. I do have an uh, EEPROM in here as well that I programmed because I did do the EEPROM hack. You can see, uh, I think it's under here where you, you have to solder in a couple of resistors. All right, let's press this down. Oh, yeah, that's in there. All right, so now what I want to do is um, let me resituate the camera so that I can see uh, the video and I'm going to see if I can turn it on if I get an actual picture out of this and see if this ULA works. All right, let's do that. All right, the moment of truth. I've got uh, the uh, my monitor hooked up through composite um, and uh, this is the power supply. So again, uh, this is the replacement ULA by Charlie Engel and uh, CPU. Now again, I didn't put, uh, uh, let me make sure that this is actually in there properly before I, uh, yeah, it's not quite sitting right, so let me just, there you go. Ah. You di didn't want to, um... okay, and so then the, um... yeah, so this is in, this has good memory, I recapped the board, just couldn't get it to work because I, I think the problem was this. Uh, the other thing I didn't do is I didn't add in back the uh, transistor that's supposed to fit on top of here. Uh, I don't think it should do any damage to the computer because the other one doesn't have it. Um, not sure what uh, it, it's trying to do. Oh, here's the transistor. So I'm going to do it without the transistor. And if it, I'm just going to boot it up very quickly to see if it works, see if I get the boot screen. And then I don't have a keyboard for this and I'm not taking my other one apart yet. But... Um, uh, if this works, then I can invest in a keyboard membrane and uh, yeah, get this get this machine up and running. So let's give it a try. Here we go. And still has that problem. Oh, I was doing a memory test for that, but it has the. Um... Oh, I see. This is actually, uh, maybe this is what the, uh, so now it's saying it's got some bad, oh, wait. Oh, I was saying no ROM detected. Oh, I, I think I know what the problem is. I actually don't have the appropriate, uh, okay. Uh, so that is the, uh, uh, all right. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, make sure that I have the appropriate uh, uh, chip in here that has the actual ROM. Uh, I don't even know what I did with my old ROM. So let me find that. I can't find my EEPROM programmer. Uh, and I think I left it at the office and, uh, and I can't find the ROM either, which is probably with the programmer. I probably put it in the same box with the other uh, EEPROMs. Um, so what I did is first uh, I resoldered on, uh, if you can see the, um, um, the, uh, the transistor, uh, just to be sure uh, that wasn't the issue. Um, and. Uh, uh, and then I also um, uh, tried a uh, different uh, RAM that came out of my uh, ZX81's RAM pack. Uh, again, I tested all these, so they should work. But, um, you know, what I read online with this test is if you start with a bad screen like that, then you have lower RAM problems. Um, and every time you boot this through... Um, Certainly, it, you know, here it looks like it, everything's good, but uh, but at one point, yeah, what, the fact that it can't display the text, um, so it has two bad RAMs. But every time you you, you redo this, um, it uh, 
it gives you different ones, so I, I don't know what's going on. Testing memory content. Uh, well, lower RAM, I guess, and then. Yeah, so now, now it has finds three bad or four. So I don't know. And then it gives it a final message that says um, upper RAM, uh, something about upper RAM, but this doesn't have upper RAM. And uh, unless uh, there's, I'll have to check on whether or not this, somebody took the upper RAM out when they sold it to me. And because I think you have to bridge something. Maybe that's the issue. But uh, try different RAM chips. It gives this is the same RAM error. But I've also read that when you start off getting a bad screen like this, that it's the lower RAM. But I tested all that. So if you know what's going on, um, I you know unfortunately it's hard to. Uh, it says uh, so yeah so it's yeah so I don't. And there's no RAM in here, so why would it actually, I mean, should, should all the RAM be bad? So I don't know what's kind of going on here. And then it, yeah, it says, no lower, no upper RAM detected. Okay, yeah, I, I don't expect there is an upper RAM, but why would it complain about that? Um, or is that just a, a general message? It seems like that's the error message it's giving you is no upper RAM detected. And there shouldn't be, it doesn't have any upper RAM. Um, but, uh, so, ah, still, so this is working. I got this back on here and I, I can take that right back off. It's not a big deal. But, um, so if you know what's going on here, I'll, I'll do a little bit more investigation, uh, whether or not, I know that there's a, there's a line here that you have to bridge if you're not using the, uh, upper RAM, but I got this machine without upper RAM unless somebody went in there and took it out. I mean, this has the sockets, but I assume it has the sockets, even if it's this, uh, 16k version of that um so i don't know why it's giving me that but as i said it's hard to read the messages but there is a time where it just seems to be going through and um, by the way i'm wearing a wrist strap on my ankle in case you're worried about me touching this stuff live um but just the fact you know you don't even get the content or 16 yeah and so when it's doing the lower 16k ram it seems like it's doing okay because it, i'm assuming that's what the tests are and then it, yeah, I don't know what. I found two bad ones, but it changes every time. So, and then it says no upper RAM detected. So I don't know if that means, and then, yeah. Yeah. So I'll have to investigate a bit more. I thought this would just be as simple as putting a, a CA socket, socket in, but I've been through this uh, board uh, tooth and nail. I mean, I've looked at every trace. I've replaced all the sockets. These this 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 and those these it came socketed with so yeah a little frustrated uh that uh so i don't think putting a rom in there is going to cause this to work I and mean, the fact that i'm getting this kind of screen uh um uh issues uh just suggests that there's it's still broken so if you have any comments on this uh thank you dave from dave, dr dave's diversion for sending me the ula uh, replacement because uh, it, it, it's going to come in handy these things do uh, break and i do have a working uh, spectrum but i'd love to get this one working and I, sort of you know i've, I've done a lot of in, interesting work i have these two i didn't have the right capacitor so i created the own caps where they're sort of um facing each other i call these my opposing caps because they're two capacitors that are sort of facing each other and they're run in a series to get sort of the the right uh ferrets microfarads but um yeah so i think i'll end here and uh uh thanks for joining me and i'll see you next time